I'm starting up Painter 12 in the factory default mode by holding the shift button down when I start the program just so that it starts you know with all the tools in a familiar place for everybody and um, what I want to talk about is how to blend colors in Painter 12 I actually just kind of figured this out recently and probably there are other people who figured it out but one of the things that I've always hated about Painter is that whenever I try to uh, blend with it, um, it seems like they always demonstrate these things where that kind of rely on, well, it's kind of petering out here, but you, you paint again, oh, it's red again. And, you know, do I, do I grab this color exactly? What do I do? And, you know, can I do something that involves the opacity and um, fading it off with pen pressure? Whatever it is, I, I don't know, it's just way too much bother for me and I've never really figured it out or gotten a taste for it. Um, so I've avoided using Painter even though I've kind of kept upgrading it. It's kind of a waste of money. So um, what I figured out just recently is that there's this new blender called the Water Rake. And I really like the way it works. And what I found is that if you just use it in its default condition, it's actually pretty good for blending. Um, I've used something here that has this Im impasto built into it, this raised area, so it's really not probably the best example. But um, one of the things that also, when I use it, when I use the water rake, I say Control B. And I go over to the general um, settings. I just hit Control B again. General settings. And where it says method, instead of saying cover, I change it to cloning. And that seems to work especially well. Because what it does is it picks up the color from underneath and um, it kind of redistributes it a little bit. So if you, if you say, and I'm going to just. Um, I'm going to put something that doesn't have this impasto down, like maybe one of these uh, uh, pastel-y kind of things. Um, so here's a pastel. I'm making it large. There it is. And let's say here's another color. And like that. Now, if I just kind of taper off, fade off, obviously that's not the way to blend these. Or if it is, I don't know, good, more power to you. I can't do it. But um, if you go to the water rake, and let's see if I can find it. <laughs> Here it is, water rake. And um, and you make sure that it's on cloning. Then um, you know I really find that this is for me. It creates a nice texture in the blend. And if I make it large, the the the, the water rake by using I'm using the square brackets. Um, it makes the blending region larger. And if I uh, use the opacity, which is this thing here, 26 right now, and if I turn it way down to 3%, you'll see that the water rake now has very little ability to push the color around. Uh, why does opacity affect that? I don't know, because normally we think of opacity as kind of behaving somewhat differently than that, but that's what it does in this case. And if you take the opacity, not the size, but the opacity, and you turn it way up, then um, it's very easy to push the color around. So if you have the opacity um, and, the, and large and the thing large, you can, you can, um, and it's set to cloning. Uh, it's a pretty good way to blend this stuff.